My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 24 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be taking care of everything jam expects you to know so long air is concerned. I shall be doing explanations and introduction, then we go straight to past questions and we shall answer almost every question jam has ever said under air in chemistry. In episode number one, we establish that chemistry is the study of the composition, properties, and uses of matter. Then we agree that matter is divided into pure and impure substances. The pure substances are elements and compounds. Meanwhile, the impure part of matter is referred to as mixture. Mixture is a combination of two or more substances in which each of the substances still retains their identity. That is to say, mixture is two or more substances, elements, compound, whatever, combined physically. One of the feature of mixture is that each of the components making the mixture retain their properties. And this is what distinguishes it from compound because compounds are chemically combined and each of the elements making up the compound, they don't retain their features. Another property of mixtures is that they can be separated. Mixtures can be separated and the composition of mixture actually vary. It is known constant. Example of mixture. If you pour sand inside water or gari, you form a mixture. A perfect example of mixture is air. So air is a mixture. That means air is a combination of substances combined physically and each of the constituents of air retain their properties and air can be separated. That is what makes air a mixture. Since we agree that air is a mixture, what are the constituents of air? Since every mixture have things that make them up. Like bronze is a mixture of copper and tin. Brass is a mixture of copper and zinc. So you see the things making up the mixture. For air, we have nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, argon, water vapor, dust. Other components of air are helium, methane, krypton, neon, and hydrogen. Krypton, neon, helium, and argon are noble gases as a component of air. Each of these components, they have specific percentage in air. For example, air is made up of 78% nitrogen. And air is made up of 21% oxygen. Air is made up of 0.03% carbon dioxide. So, most textbooks and things you need to know in jump, they agree with nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. After that, they will tell you that others are noble gases, water vapor, and dust, or dissolved air. So they classify everything here as one. I am bringing everything here for you to see. This is an advanced form. But if you are able to stop here at argon, then you say water vapor and other noble gases. You are good to go. Now, what does hydrogen do in air? Hydrogen is very okay for nitrogen fixation and it acts as diluent of air. Nitrogen acts as diluent of air, which means it slows down burning and corrosion. Hydrogen is opposite of oxygen or almost the opposite of oxygen in air. This is because oxygen 
is a component of air that makes burning possible. Without oxygen, burning is not possible. If you remove oxygen from air using alkaline pyrogalor, you cannot burn, you cannot light fire. So oxygen is what makes burning possible. And nitrogen slows down the burning process and it also helps to prevent corrosion. It acts as diluent of air to dilute. Oxygen, apart from combustion, helps in respiration. The carbon dioxide are used as fire extinguishers and other things they do. Argon is approximately 1% in air and it is used in gas feed electric lamp. This is because it prevents the oxidation of the gas filaments. Helium is used in filling balloons, same as hydrogen. Hydrogen is used in filling balloons, hardening oils used in herbal process for manufacturing ammonia and it is used to make hydrogen bomb. But our concern here is hydrogen being used to feed balloon in air. Although hydrogen and helium are used in filling balloons, helium is preferred to hydrogen because helium is very light, hydrogen is very light. However, helium does not support combustion, but hydrogen is flammable. So helium will give you a more stable balloon to avoid hazard. Helium is therefore preferred to hydrogen for filling balloon. Neon is used in aerodrome and krypton is used in photographer's flash tube. Methane is the most abundant constituent of natural gas. It is an organic compound. All that being said and done, how do we separate constituents of air? We've talked about the uses of these constituents. There is variation in composition of air due to compression, uh, temperature, altitude, and availability of water. If the temperature is very high or in dry seasons, you will agree with me that the composition or the quantity of water vapor in the air will definitely drop. Yes, that is true. And since air is a mixture, in some places you probably have a better air than others because in some places the air has been polluted, which we shall see under air pollution and greenhouse effects. Greenhouse effects is simply the increase in temperature of the atmosphere due to some gases that trap heat. When there is some rain, some gases trap heat from the sun, thereby increasing the temperature of the atmosphere. Now, these are top example of greenhouse gases. They are heat trapping gases and they cause global warming, actually. And the main consequence or effect of global warming is flooding of coastal regions. So take a look at the various greenhouse gases. Now let's start answering questions. From there, we shall touch all these areas or any area we've not touched. 25 cm cube of mixture of noble gases was obtained from air after the removal of other constituents. What was the original volume of air? Now what are noble gases? Argon, helium, neon, krypton. These are the noble gases in air. They are unreactive. Now we said that argon is approximately 1% in air. If you add helium, krypton, and neon, all the noble gases in air, they account to around 1%. So the noble gases in air, they account for around 1%. So if 1% is 25 cm cube as said in the question, then what will 100% be? 100% of the air will simply be, let's call it S, since argon all noble gases account for only 1% and 1% of the volume of air according to this question is 25 cm cube. 100% will therefore be, let's call it S cm cube. Cross multiplying, S times 1% is equals 100 times 25. So S is therefore 25 times 100 and that is 25, 2500 cm cube. The original volume of the air is 2,500 cm cube. 
and which of the following reagents will remove carbon dioxide from the mixture of carbon dioxide and nitrogen? To remove carbon dioxide from the mixture of carbon dioxide and nitrogen, we remove we use aqueous KOH, aqueous potassium hydroxide. It has a varied composition from one place to another. Its constituents can be separated by physical means. It contains unreactive noble gases. Which of the above shows that air is a mixture? All of the options show that air is a mixture. It has various comp uh, composition from place to place. Its constituents can be separated by physical means. That is the property of all mixtures. And it contains unreactive noble gases. Air contains noble gases. And these noble gases, they don't actually react. This is why you have more nitrogen in air than you have when nitrogen reacts with other compounds. More noble gases are added to nitrogen and they actually don't react. So option D is the correct option. The noble gas argon is used for electric arc welding. So let's add it to here, electric arc welding. Then the nitrogen obtained from air has a density higher than the one from nitrogen containing compound because the one from air is contaminated with rare gases. I think I said that five seconds ago. <laughs> and which of the following pollutants is associated with brain damage? Radioactive fallout is associated with brain damage. It can even affect the, your hearing. It is a radioactive material. The greenhouse effect is associated with dash. The greenhouse effect is associated with the various gases. However, carbon dioxide is the biggest greenhouse gas. In fact, it is the main greenhouse gas. Others are learning. Methane, nitrogen, uh, two oxide, blah, 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 are learning when it comes to being greenhouse gas. The gas that is used for the treatment of cancer is DASH. Radon is a radioactive material and it can be used to treat cancer. And the gas that is useful in protecting humans against solar radiation is ozone. Ozone is a gas in the atmosphere, a combination of gas which form a layer around the atmosphere. If you ever boarded a plane before, when the plane is flying, it bosses the atmosphere like this ozone. It goes above it, but as it's moving, you'll be seeing the ozone layer covering the earth on the ground. It is a very, very interesting experience. And what is the decrease in volume of air when pyrogallum is shaking with 30 cm cube of air? This alkaline pyrogallum will remove oxygen. Removing oxygen means you are removing 21% of air. 21% of air is 21 over 100 times the total here is 30 times 30. This is this cancels this 21 times 3 divided by 10. That should give you 6.3 cm cube. So the decrease in air when pyrogallo is shaking with 30 cm cube of air is 6.3 cm cube. That is the decrease. If you are asked what is the volume of air remaining when pyrogallo is shaking with 30 cm cube of air. Pyrogallon shaken will remove 6.3 cm cube. 30 minus 6.3 cm cube is the volume of air that will be remaining. So questions can come anyway, and you can answer it anyway. A carcinogenic substance is simply an asbestos dust. Option C is the one that is carcinogenic. An asbestos dust is carcinogenic, and a carcinogenic is any substance radionuclear or radiation that is an agent directly involved in causing cancer. So all these guys can cause cancer. They can disrupt cellular process or metabolic process. Which of the following noble gas is commonly found in the atmosphere? Argon is commonly found. As you can see, helium, krypton, and neon, they are in very, very minute quantity. But argon is approaching 1%. So argon is more common. When air is successfully passed through 
sodium hydroxide solution, alkaline pyrogalor, and then concentrated tetraoxysulfate cis. Its remaining components are. Now let's observe. Air contains carbon dioxide. It contains oxygen. It contains water vapor. It contains red gases, and it contains nitrogen in sufficient amount. So, when this air is passed through sodium hydroxide solution, alkaline pyrogallo, and con H2SO4, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water vapor will be removed. Con H2SO4 is a drying agent and it's also dehydrating. It removes water. Alkaline pyrogallo will remove oxygen. Then, sodium hydroxide or KOH will try to trap the carbon four oxide. Nitrogen and red gases are what will be left in the air. Option D is the correct option. There is no way oxygen will remain, and there is no way carbon four oxide will remain. And the likely consequence of using fuels with higher sulfur content is acid rain. When fuel with sulfur content is burned, it produces SO2. So for four oxide, which bonds with rainwater to form tetraoxosulfate four and tetraoxosulfate six, hence acid rain. The most abundant element on the Earth's crust is oxygen. Oxygen is the most abundant element on Earth. That is about forty-six point six percent. Silicon is the second most abundant element, about twenty-seven point seven percent. Then aluminium follows about 8.1%, followed by iron, calcium, sodium, and potassium. The substance Liz considers as a source of environmental pollution, out of all the options, silicate materials are least considered as pollutants because they are harmless to man. And the mixture of gases used in photographer's flash tube is cryptin. And xenon. When you mix scripting and xenon, you make the photographer's flash tube. And oxygen in air can be removed using pyrogallo solution. The constituent of air that acts as a diluent is nitrogen, diluent of air. And the gas that is most dangerous pollutant to human is to human is sulfur two oxide. It is very poisonous. And it is so so dangerous. Option D is the correct option. Argon is used in gas feed electric bulb because it prolongs the life of the filament. Why? It prevents oxidation of the filament. With that, the life of the filament is prolonged. And the noble gases owe their inactivity to octet configuration. If you follow my Electronic configuration class, you will see that when elements obtain octet configuration or duplex stable configuration, they become so unreactive. And a noble gas that is associated with global warming is a noble gas, a gas that is not associated with global warming is dash. A, B, and C, you can see them here, they are associated with global warming. SO3, CH4, CO2, the other guy at the top. Hydrogen is not associated with global warming. Which of the following mixture of gas is likely to burn in flame? Helium and neon, when you mix them, they don't react and they don't burn. Nitrogen acts as diluent. So when you mix nitrogen and neon, nitrogen doesn't even support, uh, support burning. It slows down burning. And neon, on the other hand, is unreactive. For option D, Nitrogen doesn't support burning, it acts as diluent, and helium is also unreactive. So A, B, and D, they won't really react or burn. That leaves us with option C as the correct option. Whether we can prove it or we cannot prove it, it's not our problem. We are sure that A, B, and D are wrong. So option C should be correct. And the property used in industrial preparation of nitrogen and oxygen from air is boiling point because the criteria for that is difference in boiling point. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been so so interesting. I make sure I answer almost every question Jam has ever said under air 
in chemistry under pollution, under greenhouse effect. And I gave you all the greenhouse gases. I gave you the uses of all the constituents of air, even these percentages. This thing that you never see in most textbooks. In fact, I don't think any textbook can give you these details. You've just got it. So I recommend that you watch this video once again, look at it, understand. Then that is nice. And I recommend that you get the Flash Learner Jam app. Get it right now and right here. It will help you to do very, very, very well in Jam. Trust me, I won't recommend something that won't be okay for you. If you are watching this on YouTube, use the description below to install it. If you need to chat me up directly, chat me using my social handles. I will respond to you. Or you visit your Play Store, flashlearner.com. You will see links. To download the app. Ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourself. See you in the next episode where we shall be looking at water.